Maar ik ga wel beginnen. Zou jij de deur dicht willen doen? Ja? Super. Oh, let's wait a moment. Oké. Okay. Oké, okay. welkom. Uh, oh. No, not go too far that way. Oké. Okay. Uh, yeah. First of all, my native tongue isn't English, so I will try to do my best. And if I have some words and I have to remember how it is, please uh, uh, be a bit patient, but uh, I will do my best. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I am uh, Manuel Gasseling, part of the uh, KFPS inspection. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the stallion choice today. Are there any breeders here? Yeah, already breeding with, with horses? Yeah, okay. And are you uh, a bit familiar with the, 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 the breedings and the, the tools on the website and such things? No? Yeah, a bit? Okay. Now, yeah, let's see. We're just going to start. If the, uh, we, are, we have not a lot of people, so uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them whenever you want. We don't have to wait till the, the presentation is over, so let's try to make it a bit interactive. Okay, uh, what's the program for today? We're going to talk about the, the breeding goal of the KFPS. Yeah, how do we like to see uh, the breeding develop in, uh, in the future and uh, also for your own breeding? Yeah. The linear score form, that's the uh, data sheet for your own mare. You have already all seen uh, a linear score form for your mare. Well, we will get into it, so. Uh, DNA test, we will shortly uh, discuss about the mare characteristics. Breeding values, very important for the stallion selection. The stallion information itself. Yeah, so all the information about the breeding, offspring, uh, pedigree from the stallions. Kinship and inbreeding percentages, uh, the use of the KFPS website and uh, the tools uh, that we provide to uh, select a stallion. And what stallion should I use for my mare? Uh, it's, uh, it's also a, a bit of a personal choice, but we try to give you some tools to select the correct stallion of the, maybe the best stallion for your mare. But never forget, it's also a personal choice uh, and personal preferences. A breeding goal. Yeah, the breeding goal of the KFPS. You can read this on the website. Maybe you already done it. Functional. Uh, we want to have a, a utility horse radiating the Frisian bread characteristics that is healthy, energetic, and has an attitude for the for the sport. Huh? The ability to uh, perform in sports, riding, driving, such things. Uh, the breeding goal for KFPS, we uh, made uh, different in four different uh, characteristics, fertility and health. Uh, on number one place, uh, recently, last year, we changed the order in our breeding goal. Uh, fertility and health is placed on top. Character on second place, also a very important uh, issue, you should never uh, it's, it's, it's one of the points we, we shouldn't go um, uh, any, uh, how do you say, any less in character. Huh? Uh, that's something uh, the Frisian horse is very famous about, easy going horse. Uh, we should uh, all, all try to maintain it in our breed. Then we're going to look at uh, exterior movements. Now, the breed characteristics, conformation, leg work and movement. And uh, the spot attitude. Now, breeding type, good to know what, is, uh, what, would, would, what would you like to see. We want to see a noble head, a light neck, neck head connection. We want to see a long neck yeah, placed vertical on the body. We want to like to see a lot of manes, a uh, big tail, and a jet black color. Uh, so, those are terms we would like to see in our breeding. For conformation, yeah, what's, what's really important, we want to see an, a built uh, horse with a strong back, good connections in the loins, a good croup, and with enough length and good position in the body, yeah, not too uh, steep and not too straight. And leg work, yeah, no feet, no horse, you already know the expression, very important. Yeah. 
we want to see uh, correct uh, leg work, uh, the stances should be correct, we want to see big hooves, we want to see uh, clean and lean leg work, uh, high quality. And of course, last, the movement, breathing goal, the walk, the trot, the canter. Uh, the, one of the most important things, text and regularity. We want to see power, we want to see room, uh, and the, the use of the body, suppleness, correctness in movement, uh, uh, flexion in the hog, self-carriage, balance and elevation, and moment of suspension. Those are the main uh, characteristics for, for movement. Yeah, your breathing goals, as I said before, is also a bit of a personal choice, and you also have to look good at your own mare and your own breathing. Yeah. Yeah, you want to uh, breathe something for driving, for riding. Uh, maybe you like the inspection so much that you only select horses for the inspection. Yeah, all personal choices you have to make. But always keep in mind what's the breathing goal yeah, of KFPS and try to work with your breathing towards that goal. Now we've created uh, the seven uh, step program. We're first going to look at the linear score form from, from, from the mares. It's a very uh, important piece of data where you can select your stallion. Uh, what do we do with the linear scoring? Generate data, uh, a value assessment. We've made a, a, some kind of index and the breeding values are, uh, they, they come out of all the linear score forms from all the mares and horses who be judged with a linear score form. And it's an, yeah, a really helpful tool for the selection of your, uh, for, for a stallion. Now yeah, we score the mares and horses. Uh, some stallion, the stallions also have uh, be scored at the first viewing. But we do it since 1993. Uh, good to know is we have you already uh, you have seen a linear score form from a mare. Most of you did, I think. Uh, the example is in the presentation. So, but good to understand is we have an upper bar and a lower bar. In the upper bar, I will let you see it here, are all the characteristics from your horse, from a racial type, frame, for leg work, for trot, and for the walk. And we all judge uh, with crosses where your mare fits the profile. And good to know is the average is uh, a score of 25. And that score of 25 is, uh, corresponds with the uh, marks given in the lower bar uh, of a six and a half. So everything average 25 will approximately give a six and a half in, uh, in your mark. And the, 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 gray, the gray areas are the preference areas. Now the upper bar, we have 27 characteristics. Uh, we divide it in nine classes where, uh, as you can see here, we judge from a five till uh, a 45. Uh, now yeah, and then here are the farther away from the middle, the less common. I think that's clear. Huh? Uh, the farther away from the middle, the farther away from the average Frisian horse. It's really important to know, uh, to understand your linear score form, and also to understand what should I improve for your mare, or uh, uh, does it need to be improved. Then it's good to know we have optimum and maximum characteristics. The maximum characteristics, the, uh, there are the characteristics, uh, for example, uh, the head, and a head can't be noble enough. Uh, so the higher, the better. But uh, the optimum characteristic that, that are, the, uh, for example, uh, the back, you don't want a back too tight and you don't want it too weak. So the score should be in the middle. Uh, that's the optimum uh, characteristic. Yeah, no questions till now? Okay. Now, yeah, th these are some uh, examples for the, uh, the optimums. Uh, as I said, the back, the loins, the croup, not too sloping, not too straight, uh, the front legs uh, standing under or too straight, you want it to be correct. So average score is the best for an optimum score. And when you look at the maximum characteristics, the higher the better uh, overall. 
Uh, for example, neck conformation, past and length, now shape of the hooves, length in walk. Uh, you can't have uh, too much length in walk. Okay, then, uh, as I said, the average, when we score the horses, the average is 25. One moment. And so you can see 68% of all our mares that we will be judged in, at inspections score around uh, the 69, uh, 96, sorry, till the 104. It's ongeveer 70% uh, will be judged in the average score of uh, the total population. So that's quite a lot. And if you want to select a stallion who improves some characteristics, then you should always choose uh, a breeding value above the 104. Is that clear? Uh, otherwise, uh, it's, it's not uh, common that you can say it will be improved. Uh, this is in uh, another example, but more, uh, the last one was for uh, the breeding values. This is more uh, the linear score form, how many averages. The, so the average score is 20, 25, and 30, and everything on the, the left and the right side is above or below average. Yeah, the lower bar, as I said, that's, that's uh, the, the marks the, uh, we give uh, on, the, on the bottom of the linear score form. That is uh, for racial type, for conformation, for leg work, for the walk and the trot. What's really important is it must relate to the crosses put in on the, uh, on the upside. Eh? When you have a lot of maximum scores, then it should relate with the, the mark given in the lower bar. So when, it's, uh, when you have a lot of maximum scores, so a really positive score, uh, it should be above that six and a half. So it should relate with each other. But keep in mind, the linear score form is for your mare. Huh? So it does not say a lot about the breeding uh, as a whole. Huh? That's the breeding values. The breeding values, we will see it Oh, that's, that's a bit later in the presentation. Okay, forget it, we will come back to it. DNA tests. Now, yeah, everybody knows we have a, a, a closed breeding program, and uh, yeah, we have some inbred uh, of inbreeding problems. Uh, we uh, created some DNA tests uh, to, uh, to fish out the most important things. And yeah, the only thing I can say is, yeah, have your mares tested. It's really important. Yeah? You don't make a risky a partnership with a stallion, with a mare. And I will show you this one. Yeah? Pairing of a stallion and a mare who are both carriers. Maybe you all have seen this picture before. But if you pair, uh, this is a, an, 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 the chance of an abnormality is 25% when you make such kind of pair. Uh, a stallion and a mare who both have, uh, uh, who both are carriers. 50% uh, is that you get a carrier. There's no abnormality, but it is a carrier, and 25% chance of a free uh, fall uh, without any remarks. And what's happening when you uh, pair a stallion who isn't a carrier and a mare who is a carrier, uh, then it's a chance 50-50, eh? that you can get a carrier or a non-carrier. Uh, the big advantage is when you make this kind of pairing, you don't get uh, any abnormalities. Uh, so keep that in mind for your own breeding. Uh, try not to pair two uh, carriers, because that's, it's a really a dangerous uh, choice. Uh, this is a, a report from an approved stallion. You can see this uh, report on the website from the KFPS. And it's always good when you selected a horse, check these reports. They give you a lot of information. Uh, you can uh, see uh, it's in Dutch, but they're also in English available. But if there are any abnormalities in carriership, you can see it already in the DNA, DNA test. 
Uh, there's always check if the stallion is a carrier. And which one? Eh? We have multiple. Eh? Yeah, it's a powerful tool. Yeah. Uh, it, it gives also uh, some risks. Yeah. Uh, as, a, as I list here, the bottleneck will lead to more inbreeding. Yeah, so don't expel carrier stallions. That's not why we intended to use this tool. Uh, otherwise, we get, uh, get a new bottleneck and uh, yeah, have no, uh, more and more inbreed, inbre inbreeding. Uh, and yeah, don't forget, stallions who are carriers also have a lot of positive genes, uh, which are given to their offspring. So, and you want to maintain also those positive genetics for your breeding program. Uh. So don't exclude those stallions, would be the advice, but think good yeah, how you pair up with your mare. Avoid risky matches. Yeah, be sure your mare is tested and your, if your mare is tested and you know uh, where maybe a problem lies. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Free of all, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. The thing is, um, is that 100% sure? Or should you anyway? Uh, you can, you can uh, assume that it's 100%. Well, the, the pairing of two tested uh, adult horses, yeah. yeah, it provides you data from the, the offspring. So, yeah, you can, uh, you can uh, calculate with, with those values. It's 16 and it says it in there. Yeah. Yeah, if the parents are untested, then I, and it's, it's it says literally, yes. okay, okay. So that is kind of strange, because at that point, I wouldn't expect it to say this. Okay. And of course, for a man who will be 16 now, since the test is only available since... Can you make, uh, can you make me a I'll screenshot? Have, yeah, I'll have a look at it and show And I will, I will check it, and maybe yeah. give you an answer this, uh, this stallion show. Uh, I am I'm interested uh, how it's possible, when the mare and the stallion is not tested, yeah, it's all already an older stallion. It can be any else, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a quick look. Okay, yeah, have a quick look and let me know. But yeah, okay, yeah, test your mares. Be sure uh, what, you're, what you're doing. Now, yeah, rapid effect. It, it seems obvious, but abnormality is false. That uh, will be less and less when we use these tools. Uh, and uh, for the stallions, uh, 2014, uh, from then till now, we test all the stallions, so all that data is available, and use it in your uh, in your breeding. Now, yeah, again, don't withdraw carriers from breeding. Uh, don't select horses of stallions who are carriers. They give also a lot of positive uh, breeding characteristics. And sure, stallions with uh, status can just be approved as any other other, other stallion. We don't want to exclude them from breeding. Now, in the near future, we're still developing uh, more DNA tests. It's, it's a hot topic at the moment, I know. Health, vitality of the horse is a, is a, is a, a real important uh, issue at the moment. And we hope in the near and also in the far future uh, to see more tests uh, to become available and uh, try to yeah, reduce uh, all those, uh, naja, bad characteristics. Okay, mere characteristics, what should we improve or what should we embed? Uh, well, you, uh, when you look at the, the characteristics of your mare, what's important? The personal evaluation, and uh, that's a linear score form as discussed. The breeding values, do you know the difference between the linear score form and the breeding values? Yeah. In October last yeah. year. And I've got the linear score, but the breeding values, there's nothing there yet. Oh, okay. So I, I was told that KFPS is behind and that uh, sometime after the stallion show, I should receive 
on the website my reading values. Because for me, it's hard to take a look at the linear score and then you have the uh, reading value of the stallion and although they're similar, yeah. uh, so I'm waiting for the breeding value so I can come. That, that's a good idea. You should wait. Uh, like the linear score form is uh, for the mare itself. Uh? Genetically speaking, it's not really reliable. Uh? It's the phenotype. You want to look at the genotype factor. Uh? And the, the breeding values are a combined score from the, the mare of the dam, the shire, the, the stallion, the own score, siblings. So it's a combined value of data which give you more indication of a genetic yeah, factor. So it's just not different that 100 is average versus 25. Yeah. The fact is the breeding values include her relatives. Her relatives, so f far more information than the only observation of the mare itself. Okay. Yeah, so and that's, that's really good to understand that uh, the, don't look only to, your, uh, to the mare itself and the linear score form, but try to uh, have a wide view and the breeding values are, are maybe more important than the linear score form from the mare. Okay. Yeah? Uh, what do we also include there? It is the, the carrier status, dam line, own offspring. Also good eh, to, to know if you already had a few stallions eh, used and you have some foals. Eh, try to look at what's the result of your breeding. Eh, it's also very important. So your own observation is also very important in your breeding. Yeah, character and personality. Yeah, don't forget, eh, we all want to use the horses, so we want easygoing horses, eh, like the Frisian breed is intended to be. Eh, don't eh, forget that and yeah, try to use stallions who eh, yeah, and what characteristics yeah, would you like to improve or embed? Yeah, then you can take a look at your linear score form. Uh, I, I have here an example from a mare. Now, if you, if you can take a look and you look at the marks, uh, racial type, conformation and leg work, this mare scores a seven, uh, corresponding with the crosses above. It's, well, yeah, it, 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 it's correct. But the most problem here is the walk and the trot, eh? a six and a six and a half. So if you would own this mare, those two eh, characteristics are, are worth checking out to be improved. But then the next step, these are her breeding values. And they are a bit different than her own characteristics. So that's why I say, eh, check your linear score form. Uh, Cross-link it with your uh, breeding values. Try to find some similarities. That would be good eh? when you have a, ex a good expression in the head and the breeding values also say, yeah, okay, the complete family has a good expressiveness in the head. Then, yeah, yeah more or less you can forget about, uh, forget about that point and go on in your list. Eh? When you're looking at the breeding values and you look at a strength in a stallion, that you, you know, I was told pick no more than three. Yeah. But then when you, let's just pick one right yeah. now. So if you are going to go for uh, a characteristic and she's at, let's say 99. Yeah, you just below when average. you pick a stallion, when you add his breeding value in that specific characteristic mm -hmm. and hers and divide by two, mm -hmm. are you telling me you want it to be, ideally you want it to be more than 104? Yeah, ideally it would be more than 104, yeah. Okay. That would be ideally, if it's, if it's possible, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, yeah, we have a tool and we will see it later, uh, if it's possible and how to select those tools uh, okay. and those, those values. But good. Uh, the main thing, keep in mind, linear score form, breeding values, combine them together, but when, you, uh, when you're not sure what to choose, the breeding values are more accurate than the own linear score form from the mare. That's important. Yeah, looking for potential candidates, breeding values, reports, nah, character and personal observations. We have a lot of stallion information. 
you also get it yeah, uh, abroad. And you can also see it on the website, all the reports from the stallions, breeding values from the stallions, kinship, inbred. You can all read it in those reports. It gives you a lot of information. Eh? Also the, the ABV and uh, the EBOP test is combined in the, uh, the grade for uh, spotability, for example. So there is a, a lot of data available from the stallions. And here is eh, what we just discussed about, the average breeding value is 100. Eh, keep that good in mind with a diversion of, of 4. And that's what I say, when you want to improve, you will try to select a value above 104. For the maximum characteristics. Eh, for the optimum, try to maintain it in around the 100. Now, when you look at the stallion index and you look at those uh, breeding, uh, then you can see uh, the dark blue, the, the red and the light blue colors. Now, favorable, unfavorable, and the light blue, that uh, are the optimum characteristics. Now, this is uh, an example of a stallion. This is a, a bit of an older stallion. When you look at it now, you will say, hmm, how could that be approved eh? when you see so much red? Uh, <laughs> Uh, but this is an older stallion, uh, but it's good to see uh, the maximum uh, characteristics are, are colored red, so that uh, is a negative feature for this, uh, for this stallion. Uh, there are some dark blue colors, but uh, mainly red, so not likely this stallion will improve some of those char uh, characteristics. Now, this is another stallion. No. It's a big difference with the other one. Uh, but also these values uh, for a stallion especially are a combined uh, breeding values from all the siblings, uh, all the offspring. Also the, the mare, his, his father, his stallion, uh, his shire. So it's a combined breeding value. And you can see this stallion uh, now has a lot of positive points. Uh, and uh, he has a lot of breeding values above the 104. So this would likely be one of the stallions who comes up with your, when you fill in the tool. Uh, it's, 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 it's good possible this is a stallion who will, uh, will be presented to select. Uh, then uh, the reliability is also an important factor. Uh, the, uh, the breeding values uh, for young stallions, uh, they start at around 44-45% uh, reliability. When you really want to make sure you use a stallion, you should choose a stallion 80% uh, uh, or higher in reliability. And that excludes a bit the younger stallions, uh, but when you want to make sure, all the stallions are just as fine uh, to use. Now, uh, as I said, breeding values based on pedigree data, uh, the stallion and the mare, including the own uh, linear score form. That's for the young stallions, uh, as we've seen yesterday and today. Yeah. My understanding is the linear score is forever. That's yeah. her score. Yeah. So if I have a mare, she has a maiden mare, she has her first foal, at some point, the, the breeding values change yearly. Yeah. So the more foals she has, yeah. they're good foals, those foals are also going to be factored into her breeding value. Yeah. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's why the linear score form becomes more and more less uh, important, right. yeah, and the breeding values become more and more uh, important as your mare produces offspring and when there are good results, the breeding values also change. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Now, then uh, a bit on the website itself, the tools. Yeah, what, uh, what kind of information do we have on the website? The breeding goal, spot goal, uh, you can check that. Yeah. Uh, the horse data is for the stallions and for your mares. When you go to my KFPS, some of you can log in, I believe. Uh, when you have a mare and you are a member, so then you can log in and there's all kinds of data available for you. Uh, yeah, also the regulations, the inspections, and also the calculation of inbreed and uh, the kinship. 
Okay, this is uh, the website itself, uh, MyKFPS. I was uh, playing a bit around, but when you log in in English, I believe you have less data available than when you log in with the Dutch language. That's true, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, less. I saw, uh, the, uh, for example, all these data, what you see here, uh, uh, the breeding values, KFPS, Stadtbuch, Stallions, uh, the offspring, uh, you, you don't have all, uh, all available, I've seen. That's a bit a shame, but... So I should probably check breeding values in the Dutch instead that's of in the English and then have it translate. And then translate, yeah. <laughs> Now I will check it with, uh, with our administration, why there is less information available. It, it, it's only yeah, trans, translate and... Okay, this, that, but, but that's the reason why I put the Dutch version in. Then you have all the information, uh, all the information available. Yeah, so my KFPS, uh, these are all uh, yeah, tools you can use and information. Yeah, it's hard to read for you, okay, I understand. <laughs> but. Uh, when you select stallions, you can see this overview and you can select all uh, active breeding stallions. And you can, uh, yeah, you, you can take a look at, uh, at a stallion. I have uh, just random selected Alvin to show you. Uh, you can see his pedigree. You can see on the right side, you can see how many uh, offspring he has provided. Uh, the outcome from his central examination is visible, but also his uh, breeding values are uh, available here. Now, if I've selected in this sheet his breeding values, and then you can see, uh, Alvin is just an example, but, but for all stallions you can see here all the, uh, uh, the, the breeding characteristics uh, a, a stallion provides to, the, to his breeding. And yeah, it's, it's the same here. Huh? Everything above the 104 yeah, should be favorable and uh, our, our characteristics where, where you can choose from. And yeah, that's something you have to do. Your mare, your linear score form and breeding values, compare it with the breeding values of your stallion uh, and try to yeah, adjust where you think it needs adjusting and try to select those values, those breeding values. Okay. Uh, in the same uh, menu, you can also see his, uh, the, the, the quantity of his, of his breedings and also his star percentage is listed here, uh, 66%. And you can also see uh, how many horses have a spot predicate. If you think that's important in your breeding, uh, it's also something to consider. Uh, if you want to breed a, a spot horse, uh, try to find stallions who uh, give his offspring the most sport uh, predicates. So it's not only breeding values. Huh? Okay, and then we have the, the possibility for an extensive search. That's what I mean here. And if you do that, this is what you mean. You can select every breeding value separately. You can put in uh, a desired uh, mark. Uh, if you, and then I agree with you, don't try and fill out 20 <laughs> uh, different uh, breeding values. You won't select any, any stallion. Uh, so try to make three, four, five. First select three values. If you get a, a, a complete list, uh, for example, you have 10 stallions uh, to choose from, add one. You still have five, add one, you have two, okay. And then go and zoom in on those two and see if the uh, DNA and such things match with your mare. Yeah? Uh, I don't know why I did. Ah, okay. This is the link to all the data from the stallions. Uh, there's a lot of information about offspring, and this is then the, the report from a stallion by approval. Uh, also, take a look at those reports. There's a lot of information, and um, what, I, what I, I think is really important in this report is there's also, uh, uh, or it will come with uh, the character. It's also the characters from the offspring are described in this report.
I will always read that if you think that's for you, eh, for your own breeding, really important. Don't forget to uh, search for the character reports. Character. <laughs> Yeah, and that is, it's something, yeah, we, we should all consider it. We want to maintain eh, that, that easygoing character, the, 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 the willingness to work from our Frisian horses. That's why we love the Frisian horses also so much. So please consider that in your breeding and really check uh, in the offspring reports, eh, in the reports from the stallion itself, what kind of character, are they sensitive, are they not sensitive, and the source. Just, eh, take it in consideration by the choice of your stallion. They are accessed uh, here. I, I already thought I get some questions. By the, the, the young stallions who will go to in the central uh, examination will be tested uh, by the drivers and riders. And they fill out a form like this. Yeah, it's already, uh, it's again, it's in Dutch, but there are a lot of marks here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, how is his sensibility? How is he in the stable? How is he? Well, all kinds of marks will be given by separate yeah, uh, riders and drivers and who assess the character of the horses. Yeah. And when he is approved, they, uh, the offspring will uh, go through the ABFP test. And by the ABFP test, uh, they do the same. Right? There are weeks on the same stable and the same riders and they exchange horses, so we get individu individual uh, uh, marks, and that will be done at the same, at the, in, the, in the same way. Uh, and this is then a report from the central examiner. This is for the stallion itself. Uh. Uh, this is only uh, to let you show what uh, is uh, uh, all in the in the stallion report, but the main thing why I did this is uh, at the bottom there is a description about the general characteristics of character of the offspring, and that's why I uh, wanted to show you this, and that's also available in the English version. Yeah, then we have kinship and inbreeding, uh, also uh, very important. Yeah, we have uh, shown, uh, we've selected uh, uh, two or three horse, uh, stallions for your mare. Yeah, and I want to, uh, the inbreed percentage is below the 5%. And yeah, try to uh, uh, yeah, st yeah, have a, as low as possible kinship uh, is the advice. Uh, uh, try. Uh, and that isn't easy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you have to try to find hard. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's true. So, uh, it's always difficult to make a good balance eh, in choices. Yeah, it's it it is difficult. Yeah. On the other hand, you want to have a stallion who has a uh, very good... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Hmm? Breeding, breeding foals now, I mean, I've seen a few where we're now with the foal already at a kitchen percentage of almost 19. Yeah, yeah. We're killing ourselves yeah. if we breed like that. Yeah. And it makes that with the closed stuff book, we need to start trying to think, maybe trying to improve every time is not the issue. Yeah. But the kinship lower, that may be a, for the breed itself the more important goal at the moment. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good discussion. Uh, yeah, breeders don't want to, uh, yeah, how do I say, you, you want your, your offspring to be of good quality. Yeah. You cannot say uh, a, a stallion with a low kinship is, is a bad stallion. That's not, that's not the case. But 
Uh, if we all look at the, the breeding values, you can see that some of the most popular stallions also have the, 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 the best breeding values, but they have a high kinship. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what, what the future will bring. Maybe we should... Uh, Yeah, they have this. Five generations, seven world champions, and everybody wants this. Yeah. And you have, yeah. you, you're genetically constricting everything yeah. because this is the popular horse. Yeah. I mean, or the popular dog, but with the horses, you can say Jasper, Norbert. Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah. And everybody wants the Norbert men or Norbert offspring because they are great. Hmm. What if, yes, they are. I'm not saying they are not. Yeah. But yeah, that's a problem. There, yeah. 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 That's a yeah. That's a really that's a, that's a task for all of us, eh, To make the good uh, choices in in breeding, and uh, yeah, we can advise eh, from from the KFPS. We can advise uh, uh, what's what's the best thing to do. But yeah, we are a closed stud book. Yeah, that's true. So we have to try and and make yeah as good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's a good discussion. Yeah, okay. Which is the best, it's better to go for lower kinship. <laughs> yeah, but it depends also on your mare. Yeah? Uh, the, the, the both, both stallions give me roughly, yeah, from 104, they give me um, what the breeding values are roughly the same. Yeah, okay. With my mare. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, I mean, go with the one that gives me zero in breeding, the higher kinship. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it's good to, to look at the, you have to, to take a look ahead, eh? what's in the future, eh? your, your, your inbreeding uh, uh, will be a result of your kinship at the end, eh? and the kinship says you something about the relation to the complete uh, uh, stud book eh? of all the horses. Your inbred coefficient is related to your uh, nearest, kin of, uh, nearest kin around your horses. So there are two, yeah, that's, that's really a different approach. And when you select horses with a low kinship, yeah, in the end, it inbred will also go down. As a, yeah, it will be flowing out of that, that choices you make. So I think when we yeah, take a look now of what's, what's important, I would say uh, try to lower your kinship yeah, as it results in lower uh, in, in breeding percentages. So I would say try to lower your kinship as a goal for now. Yeah, that will be in the end will uh, resolve the inbreed uh, problematic. Yeah. But it's really difficult. I, I understand how difficult it is. You can choose, to, uh, when you choose a good stallion, not only the, n not the best, but a good stallion, yeah, the kinship can be very high and a low inbreed. And, and First Fezza, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's really hard to make a, a good choice. And when we all select, uh, just an example, an Ulbran or a Fonge or an Elias, those stallions will also become high in kinship. So it is, uh, yeah, it's a balance we should, should, should search with each other. Yeah? But we are still, we are a closed uh, start book, but um, the, the research show we still have enough, enough spread in bloodlines when we do it in a responsible way with each other to yeah, go forward with our closed start book. But it's, it's a task. Yeah. And that's why yeah, I started with our breeding goals. Vitality and, and health is, is, is priority number one. And it should be. And maybe, and maybe we, we should in the future uh, do a concession in confirmation in quality of the horse, not in quality, but you, mean, you, you know what I mean. Maybe we, we shouldn't select the best, mal the best, 
and maybe be a bit satisfied with a bit uh, below average to create a healthy horse and then try to, to move on in, in quality. I don't know, that will, we will see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. That's the hobby, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. an, an overflyer, not yeah. a, a predicting stopper or yeah. something like that. At that point, you can say, yes, we need him yeah. because we also need to keep that open. Yeah, that's really important. And I think and the... This, I mean, this year, last time around we saw it, there were three stallions that are relatively low. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen other years where you started at almost 18 and went up. Yeah. Yeah. Within the inspection, we have this discussion, but it's, it's not only the inspection who selects the. Uh, we all decide which way to go with the stallions, eh? and uh, but when you look at the stallions now, we uh, we have selected a lot of stallions with lower kinship and uh, yeah, maybe an average breeding value, but we understand we need such stallions to uh, try. Yeah, to keep the population going. So we, we really do also maybe stallions who are maybe a bit below average yeah, when you have breeding values of 99, but a kinship from uh, 105, for example, yeah, it has also a value yeah, nowadays. Uh, those stallions get a chance to prove themselves in, an, in the central examination. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's a very important factor uh, last year and also this year to select the young horses. We're not only selecting the, the highest breeding values, yeah, absolutely not. We really do keep it good in mind, yeah. The problem is everybody likes a good looking horse. We don't see, we don't see that kinship percentage. No. That's a nice looking horse. Yeah. I want to have a horse like that. And people have to understand, I think, especially breeders, because they're the ones that sell yeah. Everybody and and the KFPS and Fauna that kinship has to be just as important yeah. as those breeding values. It, it has to be. Yeah, it has to value. be. It, it, it is already a breeding value. You have yeah. to look at that yeah. and say, yeah. well, for the sake of the horse. Yeah, I can't agree more. For the sake of the breed. Yeah. We can't. We 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 don't have the. It, it cannot be in any other way if we want to keep our horse healthy and, uh, and, and have a good future in our breed. So it's, it's a really important thing. And it's still within the closed popularity, it's, it's still possible to come out of those bottlenecks and try to have more spread in bloodlines. And that's why uh, one of the things this year is let's try. There are enough stallions who don't have an approved son. Yeah, there are a lot of them. Yeah. And we also uh, ask the owners, from, if you have a good stallion, also, yeah, even if he is a bit older, from a stallion who doesn't have an uh, approved stallion, let him come yeah, and try to uh, get an approved stallion from every stallion who is active in breeding. Then you get more variation in bloodlines and will, uh, will be good for kinship, but also for inbreeding. And yeah, try to have a healthier blood uh, line, yeah. But it's yeah, that's one of the the major changes also in breeding goals. Uh, we have uh, put it on top of the list, but it will take time. Yeah, and you as breeders are the you can change it. Eh? We can only advise, but the breeders must uh, uh, dare to 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 take a stallion with with a lower kinship and. Uh, 
maybe, yeah, maybe the stallion isn't the best of the best, but has low kinship, uh, is healthy, is, yeah? Use such stallions, yeah? I think DNA and genetics are going to be a big part of this. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Getting rid of the yeah. problems. Yeah. We're still testing a lot. There will become much more data available in the future. And, uh, yeah. One thing I think is really also important is what, especially for us who are not in Holland. In Holland, you drive a lot still. It's still part of the Frisian culture. Horses outside of Holland, they have to be ridden. I mean, the majority has to be a very good riding horse from packing out to, we're now a sport horse. Yeah, uh, I know, yeah. Can't agree more. Yeah. We, <laughs> we have improved it a lot when uh, around, okay, I don't like calling stallion names, but uh, when Beard was approved, he improved a lot in walk. And there are now a, a few stallions who, yeah, uh, had a lot less walk, and uh, you can see that some stallions now have what Beard has brought us in walk uh, will be a bit degenerated now. But that's a really, uh, the central mare examinations, I don't know if you watched it, but uh, I was judging the three-year-old horses and uh, the walk is really, uh, it's difficult, it, it, it hasn't improved. A trot, yeah, but a walk. It's here. Yeah. It's it's not you have to convince the cape so, yeah. to move that up. Yeah. You're not gonna do the that. Movement, I mean, yeah, it has to be correct. What was the point of trying to get the Frisian breed to be a sport horse breed that can get young horses into the dressage competitions and then not make movement and good solid clear movement one of the absolute yeah, basic gates, yeah. Mm. Selection yeah. criteria. I mean, I've seen stallions yesterday that went through to the riding days, and I would have thrown them out because they have no walk. Okay, and with, which kinship uh, uh, which kinship had they had the stallion? Uh, I, I can't tell you now which ones I wouldn't have chosen. There were nah, stallions okay. I've seen. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I was... I, was I can understand why you, th why you think that, but... I mean, There were some uh, stallions who, who showed a really tensed, uh, a tensed walk and had a bad rhythm, but I've seen them before and they were better. But don't forget, this is only the second inspection, eh? the second viewing. So they have to go to the, the next phase, they have to be ridden and then go to the central examination. So they have a lot of steps to go. And n when you select uh, now very harsh on, on such, eh? I saw, I saw a lot of stallions yesterday who were very tensed. Yeah? And you have to give them a chance to develop and let them see what they really can. The tenseness in, his, in the body, they are all two and a half years old stallions. Eh? So you have to give them a chance to develop and uh, hopefully you, uh, it show, they show a better walk. But yeah, walk is something we, yeah, we yeah, slightly have decreased in, in breeding values. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I have to, uh, I have to speed it up a bit. Uh, <laughs> already waiting. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like to discuss it. It's, 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 it's far better than uh, eh, show you what's on screen. But yeah, I only want to make one example. Um, uh, the time runs out a bit. Um, I have selected. This is one of my own mares. 
Uh, and this is a, a, a mare with a kinship of 18%. Just for an example, I've, I've seen, uh, th these are all the stallions uh, you can select. And I have, now yeah, this is the, uh, the other list uh, from, from stallions who are available, which I can choose. And just for, not about the stallion, but I just uh, chose Ulbran to, to show you uh, what, what, what kind of results it would take. I know for my mare, Ulbran will increase the breeding values a lot. Uh, it would uh, be a good match in breeding values. But then the last thing to check, uh, uh, kinship and uh, uh, the inbreeding uh, uh, percentages is no comma, uh, 0 0.2 and 1.46. So that's okay. Uh, and a kinship, my mare was 18%. I can reduce it with Ulbran to 70.7 just below average, but it's, yeah, uh, I, can, I can better it. And if you can, can, uh, with it, uh, look at the, the breeding values, racial type 104, okay. The confirmation 106, so that, that would be an improvement on my mare. Uh, the leg work 102, okay. It's within the average, but that's okay for me. I know the, the offspring from my, uh, line very well, so that's okay for me to select a 102. Uh, the walk, 107. I really like, a, uh, I, I need a horse who can walk. Oh, for uh, the correctness, in Holland, almost 98% rides a horse and not drives a horse. It's only 2%. Okay, for your data. 98 is, is riding and 2% only drives. Uh, the trot 109, also a good improvement on my mare, and the canter 104. So, yeah, when you look at inbre inbreeding, when you look at kinship, when you look at breeding values, should fit my mare. And then it's also a personal choice. Eh? Do you like the stallion? That's always a factor, but yeah, please use those tools. Eh? Yeah, that's what I say, personal choices. Don't forget them. Yeah, budget. Uh, okay, emotions, specific breeding goal. If you want to breed riding horses, yeah, then you should uh, be more focused on uh, the breeding values on, on movement and sport abilities. Uh, in, uh, and not so much in conformation, maybe. But that's a personal choice. Uh, the tools are available. Uh, specific breeding goal, uh, available semen abroad, yeah, that's okay. That. Is it hard for you guys to get your mares pregnant? Yeah, with semen and such? In the UK since Brexit. Yeah, 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 that's, that's, a, that's maybe a problem, huh? About 30 horses. Yeah, you have, you have a lot of stallions in the States, yeah. So, and inside the States, is that also, can that be a problem? Well, can, no. No? Well, the, my question is, you know, we largely deal in shipping cool. Yeah. Semen. If we want to take advantage of stallions over here or outside of North America, we have to take a look at uh, frozen. Yeah. And that creates it makes it's more difficult. It's more difficult. Yeah. That knows what yeah. doing That's the most important thing. To, you have to have a good fat. It's frozen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? We already did. Some. Do you have any questions?